Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Lynn Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. First up on today's show, Dr. Jim had puffball mushrooms in his lawn. Puff when you step on them. What's all that all about? We'll explain. In our second segment, we received a question about how and when to prune wisteria. In our third segment, Dr. Jim is back, and he sent me a picture of an azalea in full bloom, which was just stunning. He took that picture last week. We'll share with you what that beauty was in our third segment. With a name like Pansy, (laughs) you know these flowers have to be tough. Len and I will explain what makes these flowers special and stand out in both fall and spring. This week in our What's Bugging You segment, we're going to talk about those webs that are appearing in your landscape and garden. Are they spiders or something more sinister? So get out your pens and paper and get ready to take notes, and we'll be back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com. And we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609 685 one eight eight zero. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers T-shirt. Call or text us at six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. That's six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. And we'll see you in the garden. Before the weather gets too cold, now's the time to apply Fertilome's Winterizer for established lawns. Grass absorbs the greatest amount of nutrients later in the season, just prior to the winter months. This 25-5-6 analysis also contains five micronutrients, boron, copper, iron, manganese, and zinc. Fertilome's Winterizer for established lawns builds hardiness, stem strength, and disease resistance, ensuring a healthy, stable plant which can endure the hardships of winter better than weaker plants. Lawns fed in the fall are first to green up in the spring. So the next time you are visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Furlum's Winterizer for established lawns and expect to have the best looking lawn in the neighborhood. Smeltzer and Sun Feed Supply, Route 9, Cape May, New Jersey. Mustardy Nursery, Chester Pike, Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Herfel Cross Keys Road, Washington Township, New Jersey. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Mitch smells something buttery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to talk about mushrooms. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Dr. Jim, he, he's a really interesting fellow, and it's hard to believe. I know, I've known Jim for over 25 years. Wow. He's a musician, mm-hmm. an avid gardener, a listener to Bloomers in the Garden. Yes, he He's been a customer and a friend for all that time. He was my kid's pediatrician, uh-huh. and that was after, you know, he became a doctor. doctor. Wow. Because I've, I've known him for a long time. Yeah. He was Joe Flacco's doctor. Oh, wow. Sure. Pediatrician. <laughs> no kid. Yeah. You know, football quarterback. Football guy, yeah. <laughs> now on the Eagles. Yes, sir. Uh, he sent me some pictures of some brown mounds in his lawn. And then when you step on them, they smoke. <laughs> and, and it's a type of mushroom. Mm-hmm. And just mushrooms are just weird. Just really weird. Yeah, the you know, they look us. like they appear, they appear overnight like some spaceship dropped them in. Because <laughs> sometimes they're there and then all of a sudden they're gone. Uh-huh. I don't, and there is a movement. And we have found out this morning 
that Mitch yeah. is part of that movement where you go out harvesting mushrooms oh. in the wild. Mitch, is that true? Yeah, it's true. It's a yeah. It's a great pastime. You get some free food, <laughs> <laughs> some tasty food, and some medicinal food as well. So, How, what are the medicinal uh, parts to it? I mean, um, there's a lot. Actually, a lion's mane is good for memory, Alzheimer's, and focus. Well, my goodness, uh, well that. Fits. And most of them just have like antioxidants and good for the immune system in general. Really? Yeah. See, I'd be terrified. It's like I'm eating something, and it's like, yeah. Whoops. It does take practice to identify which ones are good and which ones aren't, but wow! as long as you have a good field guide. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, and have you ever eaten the wrong one? No, never, not, <laughs> not yet. Hopefully. Uh, we He's were, still with we're, us. We're, 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 we're hoping for a projectile vomiting <laughs> segment, yeah. you know. But anyway, very, uh, I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. cool. So wow. what he found out now, the unappetizing part, now these are... <laughs> But now I was told that puff mushrooms are actually edible. Yeah. As long as you get them before they turn into the puff thing. Yeah. All right. Oh, and that wow. where the thing that Jim was talking about, and I've had them in my yard. They, it, mm. you know, it looks like dog poop. <laughs> it does. <laughs> does <awesome>. Sorry. <laughs> but that's because it's um, after they start to wither. And then yeah. when you step on them, they, they do. It's like they explode. Explode, huh? Um, and that's all of the spores coming out. Coming out. Wow. And and mushrooms do not hurt mm-hmm. hurt your it, they're feeding off of organic matter and and moisture. And and who they noted is it, uh-huh. it's a micro this in particular, this type of puffball is mycorrhiza. Oh, that yes. it's yeah. Like I mean that. it has it has that association with the roots of the trees and the plants. Right. That's something. They're still weird, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, and it's because they look so weird. Like, yeah. and that, that this is going to be turning into a, a vomit section here because <laughs> there's we get right. it all the time where yeah, people put do. down mulch uh-huh. and they have the mulch down, and when the mulch starts to decay, all of a sudden they say, "I have this stuff in my yard, and yeah. it looks like a dog threw up yeah, in my yard." Probably. And it's really it's a fungus. It's yeah. a, it's a it's a type of mushroom about that? that grows mm-hmm. and. I mean, I know exactly what they're talking oh, yeah. about. You can't eat that, right? No. Mitch yeah. is shaking his head no. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to eat it for no, sure. Yeah. But it's not like you go out and you find like, you know, pretty white button mushrooms, right? No, they're usually kind of ugly looking. <laughs> do you like, I mean, do you mix them with something? Yeah, yeah. You can mix it with like peppers and onions, make a stir fry. Garlic. Little garlic. Oh my gosh, garlic. I'm so unhealthy. But it's delicious. Most yeah. of them taste like chicken or crab. Oh yeah, crab. Yeah, wow. you're kidding. Wow. All right. I mean, we. I, I have a hard time endorsing people to go out and start yeah. foraging for mushrooms, but yeah. it is something that you can look into. But that's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. I mean, I. Yeah. You know, do you like? You said you like mushrooms. Yeah, I, like mushrooms. Yeah. I don't like the you don't consistency. Like you don't? No. Why? Because I think they're like. Like I'm um, eating a slug. <laughs> <laughs> slug. You know, as you get that in your tongue, it's like, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, what is that thing? You don't anyway. like the taste, uh, no. the texture of it. But in all, right. for your plant material and for your shrubs and for your mulch and everything, mushrooms are not a problem. Yeah. You know, and they, they don't last very long. And, and Mitch, you got to get out there and get it soon because you don't get a second day, do you? Yeah, I usually just have a maybe three day period before they get too old or buggy. Wow, mm-hmm. wow. But they and, keep replenishing. Them. And where did you say you go? Uh, Wissahickon Park. Ooh, we shouldn't tell that, because maybe that's eight. <laughs> yeah. That's eight. Yeah. And, and what do they call people that hunt for mushrooms? I guess foragers. Foragers? Foragers, wow. All right. You're a forager. All right. <laughs> a shroomer. Yeah. I've heard about that, I don't know, in the days of COVID. <laughs> Um, anyway, but that's another show. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Anyway, anyway, don't be, uh, concerned about mushrooms growing in and around your plants. It's just, again, their feet, they, they grow where there's moisture and organic matter. And it seems that this is the season and that's how Mitch and I got on the topic. We were talking about it's mushroom season. So, Hey, it's no problem. Just enjoy it. Another part of nature. Yeah, it is pretty neat. Yep. All right. We're going to be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. 
Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, PA. Ashcombs Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, PA. Sickles, Little Silver, New Jersey. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. A listener contacted us through the Bloomers in the Garden hotline and asked something we haven't had in a long time. Right. When do I cut back my wisteria? Oh, boy, that's a good, good, good question. (laughs) It sure is. Yeah. Now, you you talked with her on the phone. Was that Pat? No, it wasn't Pat. No, No, I couldn't get a hold of her. Oh, it was a text message or call? It was a uh, text text message, message, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so... I have an issue because I have Chinese wisteria, okay. and it is it is a weed. It is not pretty. It has gone through an entire hedge, and I'm not real happy. There's an American wisteria, which is more compact, more behaved, well-behaved. Um, right. The clusters of flowers are a little different, and I guess there's a warning out there just that when you plant wisteria, you got to be ready to handle it. So when... What advice did you give her, Julio? Well, the first thing is uh, you want to you want to keep it constant uh, handle on it because, like you said, it's a thug. You know, <laughs> <laughs> thug. That's a perfect word for it. It is. <laughs> so um, you know, you got to really keep uh, keep on top of the pruning part of it. Right. So um, we, I basically said, you know, do two prunings. You're going to do one in the summer and one in this in the winter. Okay. So you were talking about. The end of summer, you're talking about July, you know, August, all right? So the first, when you see those wispy uh, new growth coming out of it, mm-hmm. that's when you want to you want to start pruning it. And um, you want to take it to the fifth, you want to take it back to the from the fifth bud, okay? 
kind of like you roses. Can, yeah, kind of like roses. Yeah, one you count you count backwards one two three four five then you then you snip it. Okay. Yeah. All right. And that, like for instance, in my situation where it is just rambled, I have vines growing on All the ground. Yeah. What about the that's pods? Did did that they get a pod that's on them? Yeah. As well. Right. That. They should all be taken off, they right? Should be taken off, yeah. You, you need a you need a nice trimming back. Oh, uh, I need yeah. a more than a trimming back. Yeah, I, I don't probably. I don't know if I'll be able to save the the forsythia that it's oh, growing through. Oh wow! I mean, I may have to remove everything and then replant. Planet, but yeah. I'm talking about a 75 foot hedge of forsythia. Wow, that's huge. Yeah. That is my neighbors. Oh, <laughs> is that your neighbors? <laughs> it is my neighbors. Oh boy! And oh, my that. neighbor just—he uh-huh. thought it would be a good idea because they were planted staggered, two rows, mm-hmm. to take a section out. And so what he did is that they were big, so he got a backhoe and took a section out. But that let all the sunlight in, which grew all of the weeds that we now have, we now have instead yeah. of forsythia. Oh boy! So yeah. again, it's that Chinese wisteria yeah. mm-hmm. that you've got to be really careful with it. Um, it uh, it can be a mess. It can, yeah. It can that's why you need to be on top of it, right? Now, like you know, we sell wisteria at Bloomers, oh, yeah, and that the American variety uh, that that one still mm-hmm. does does in amethyst falls is the variety that we yeah. sell. Yeah. Stays more compact. The clusters of flowers aren't as pendulous, right? Yep. So they're like I'm showing, <laughs> like you on the YouTube can see me, see, yeah. but uh, again, there it's probably only about six to eight inches, so it it looks dwarf compared to the yeah, Chinese the variety. Mm-hmm. But it just is it respects its uh, mm-hmm. its space a little better. But they're both going to grow. Like Chinese variety can grow forty foot. That's oh, huge. We had a giant um, evergreen, and I don't know if you remember that. The, the we had it was probably forty feet tall, Ooh. and we had the entire thing taken over by wisteria. Oh, yeah. If you remember, it was uh, at the exit, and that it was climbing through an evergreen. It was killing the evergreen, and that we cut, we just cut basically around. cut it mm-hmm. at this at the uh, point where it was coming out of the ground. Base, yeah. And we got it under control and saved the evergreen. But uh, it's not something that, you know, yeah. be happy that it's growing, be happy that it's blooming, but you've got to keep after it. Mm-hmm. It's not a low-maintenance plant. No, it's not. No. And, and then the second pruning would be in January and February. And then you take it back two buds. You know. Two buds. Yep, two buds, yep. So you're pretty much hitting the, uh, the woody area. Okay. Okay. In so the it's not time. it's not after it blooms or anything like that. It's basically so if we're starting like because of this time of the year. So the you're going to prune in January, mm-hmm. two buds back, right? And then you're going to prune in J- July. Did you say right? Right, July. So you're going to prune in July to that fifth leaf. It's not like right. a rose where every time you take a flower off, you got to do something. Right. Right. No disbudding. Yeah. Right. So it's just to control control, that, uh, control the the, mm-hmm. the its need to ramble, right? Unless, <laughs> unless you you know you have the, the plant's pretty you know uh, it's young and then you want to just take that one piece and you know put it on your tr- uh, trellis because you can make them into trees. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you can. You can, but yeah. it's got it requires training. Training, yeah, you got to you train know, that. You, yeah. You've got to take a single stem, okay, and it's got to be staked, and that once it gets to like four to six feet, you've got to top it. And then you've got to, again, train it to grow like a tree. And it looks like a miniature tree and it looks cool. I mean, we, we, oh, yeah. we have one at Bloomers and, yeah, and like that it's on our property. And, but once you get it trained to do that, it stays, it doesn't ramble like we're talking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, if you do miss the summer one, you can do it in the winter. Okay. And you got to take it back, you know, to two, to two in the winter. Okay. Okay, the two. but it's two buds. But what if you have some an issue like me? Oh, like I, I, I want it. You got really I want it back. all gone. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And that there's there's no sign because they send runners oh, yeah. along the ground, yeah, which will root, and then all of a sudden you don't have runners. You have another plant. Another pl- oh, yeah. And so that's that's the problem. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. 
But again, that's the Chinese variety or Japanese varieties. And it's the one that you see that looks romantic over a trellis or over an arbor where it's hanging down and it's beautiful. But boy, it requires some work. So be prepared. Be prepared. You can't just... Let it go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can't let it go. Yeah. All right. All right. Think twice before you plant one. Yes, it's like sir. bamboo. Yeah, another you know, one. Like, oh, I love bamboo. Oh, yeah. yeah, your oh. neighbors are going to hate love you yeah. for it. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah. So you've got to be prepared right. before you plant some of these things. Oh, yeah. All right. We'll be right yeah. back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Before the weather gets too cold, now's the time to apply Fertilum's winterizer for established lawns. Grass absorbs the greatest amount of nutrients later in the season, just prior to the winter months. This 25 5 6 Analysis also contains five micronutrients, boron, copper, iron, manganese, and zinc. Furlum's winterizer for established lawns builds hardiness, stem strength, and disease resistance, ensuring a healthy, stable plant which can endure the hardships of winter better than weaker plants. Lawns fed in the fall are first to green up in the spring. So, the next time you are visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Furlum's Winterizer for established lawns and expect to have the best-looking lawn in the neighborhood. Green Acres Nursery and Garden Center, West County Line Road, Colmar, Pennsylvania. Herbins Garden Center, Chestnut Street, Emmis, Pennsylvania. Laurel Oak Garden Center, Thompson Mill Road, Marlton, New Jersey. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Coal, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomer's in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 AM WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. All right. I'm Len. He's Julio. And Jim sent us a picture of a beautiful azalea. Wow, yeah. Yeah, Dr. Jim, he, I, I love it because he's got a passion for gardening and landscaping. Yeah, he does. And the picture he took of the azalea, full bloom gangbusters, oh. just like you would think it was spring. Yeah. It was last week. Yeah. It was last week. <laughs> nice. It, and I've tracked it down. It was an encore azalea. And this was in New England. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this was in yeah. New England. So it wasn't like, because a lot of these were developed, like Southern Living has a version of it. Right. So it was it was really done in down south. You're going to talk about that in a minute. Mm-hmm. But it was encore azalea, autumn bell, or autumn twist. They're pretty close. Pretty close, huh? Um, the yeah. picture 
it showed the plan. I and it looks one of those, one of those. Okay, but Encore Zellias are pretty impressive. They are. They, are. Tell, they were developed. Julio, who, who developed those? Yeah, it was uh, it was back in uh, Glen on uh, nineteen eighty eighty one when um, that long ago. Yeah, that long ago. Yep, and when his wow. name is uh, Robert E. Lee, buddy. <laughs> 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 yeah, all right. From uh, Independence, uh, Louisiana. Okay. Yep, that's when he first started. What he did was he took a pollen, the pollen from a summer blooming azalea, and he crossed it with his own azalea cultivar. Okay. Which is pretty awesome. And that's how it's yeah. done. That's how it started. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing. But he, um, you know, he, there, there's now 31 cultivars. I mean, you know, okay. we're, we're talking, you know, in, in his, uh, in what he's doing. And uh, he used to be in the nursery business too. And he was a nurse. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. And so he was a hobbyist. He wasn't a professional hybridizer. No, he was. You know, he was a hybrid, but on his part part time, he was nursing, nurse in the nursing business. Nursing or nursery? N- nurse. He was a nurse, a nur- you know, like, like hospital a nur- nurse. A hospital nurse, yes. Really? Yeah, is that something? That is something, because so many plants come from that, like from not people in the professional industry, like some mm-hmm. hobbyist, and that, right, you know, and it's because they aren't doing it for their money; they're right. doing it for the passion, right? But his parents were in the, biz- in the nursing business, okay, in the nursery business. Well, I'll tell you that yeah. they are encores are are very strong. They, they, they are part of our listening area. They're just not hardy. Like zone B, seven B, mm-hmm. they that's about as cold as they can they get. get. And when they first came out, I was suspect. I didn't think they'd be hardy enough. Right. But Jim said he saw this. It was Cape Cod. Cape Cod, yeah, yeah. How's that? So well, I'll tell you what. Oh, that's you know good. that's zone five. It is. <laughs> it's way up there. Yeah, so maybe. Mm. Maybe. Wow. That's amazing. Every, it seems like every hybridizer now is coming out with a, a new, mm-hmm. you know, continual blooming azalea. Right. The one that Jim took the picture of, I mean, it looked like it was springtime. Oh, yeah. That's what I thought. <laughs> but where, Hello. you know, some of them, you got to, and you've got to make sure that you're reading the tags and you're doing your homework. Because some of them will just throw out a flower bud now and then. It's not going to be, you know, a, that big display. No. It feels a lot like hydrangeas, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> just <laughs> the way the hydrangeas started, where yeah. they, you know, with uh-huh. with uh, the ever Same blooming kind of hydrangeas. That's right. Now he's coming. He's not done yet. Okay. He he's gonna uh, he's looking at multicolored blooms. Okay. Multicolored. And he's blooms. also looking at the color yellow scented. Wow. Yeah. Is that awesome? It is awesome. Yeah. Evergreen or deciduous, that's the thing. He'd have to yeah. cross it yeah. with an Xberry type to get the yellow flower. Mm. How about that? Wow. That's amazing. Now it sounds like Dr. Ito. <laughs> it does, doesn't you know? it? Yeah, it's, it it's does. A, that's what I was thinking about when you said you know, when you were you were saying last time about Dr. Ito. Yeah. He's the same kind of guy. Wow. So so that's the Encore series. Yeah. Um and of course, proven winners, they have yeah. Bloomathon. Right. A um, little more cold hardy to zone six. Um, you know, Encore just has better colors. They do, huh? They do. Yep. Um, also a little more um, tolerant of sun. Mm-hmm. You know, can take some direct sun. Right. But there's also, there's even another one. There, There's Rebloom is another nurseries, uh, you know, that's their what they call their, I mean, it's confusing. And, and this is where we apologize to the consumer saying, I know we, we make it confusing, but there are so many choices for us that we can't bring them all in, mm-hmm. but we always bring the best one in for your area. Right. So mm-hmm. when yeah. you're asking about repeat blooming azaleas, make sure that you go to your local garden center and talk to them and ask them what is the best choice for your area, they, and that they'll they'll help you because some of these, like we said, are. I mean, where was he from? Robert E. Lee's got to be down yeah. south, right? Louisiana, Louisiana. Yeah. So there you go. Mm-hmm. And that, uh, and and again, I know that Southern Living magazine They're picked up on some, Good. and that they had their own branded plant. Yeah. So again, make sure you're checking hardiness zones. Make sure you're talking to your local independent garden mm-hmm. center because. Right. And you, you want to be careful because, yeah, you can find them maybe at Lowe's or Home Depot. That's it. But the main buyer 
it's just buying the azaleas. It's not necessarily independent enough to where the manager of the store is going to care about it. The azaleas right. coming in that's right. that, no, they're not hardy, you know, just yeah. say, well, that's what they shipped. So we're going to put it on the they're shelf right and it may yep. die, but mm-hmm. that's not our problem. Yeah. They, and people come in and they buy, they don't yeah, know. You need to go to your local garden yeah. center. That's where you get your best information, your best plants. Mm-hmm. You know, most everybody has a warranty. Right. So visit your local garden center and, and you will get the okay. right advice. Okay. Yeah. Now, holy, we sell them. We yes, sell yes, them. We, we do, sell yes. both uh, both the Proven Winner, Bloomathon, and Encore. Yes, we do. Which ones do you like? Gosh, you know, uh, I like them all. I mean, there's no really yeah. one favorite. Yeah, they're still different enough to where, like, you know, with hydrangeas and and hookah, and mm-hmm. some of them just like all look the same. Right. You know, it's like just give me the mm-hmm. blue one. <laughs> you know, so but with hydrangeas now. They're still young enough Mm -hmm. in the development that you can pick something that's really unique. And like each, each hybridizer will have a unique, a a unique one. Mm -hmm. So right, it's it's exciting. It is exciting, isn't it? It really is because uh, azaleas offer so much to the landscape where you've got the fact that Mm -hmm. the majority of them are evergreen. Mm -hmm. Now, Granted, you may have some issues in the colder climates where, you know, how they'll, they'll shed out the, the inside leaves. Right, right. But for the most part, there'll be outward leaves that are still evergreen. Right. So, and then there are some that will be more more cold hardy, mm-hmm. you know, through the winter. Right. But uh, just has a lot to offer. Yeah, they do. Uh, one last thing, Len. Yeah. Uh, don't plant bulbs around them because um, their shallow roots don't like to be disturbed. Okay, so no no daffodils, nothing around no, them. No, nothing around. And that that's a good point. Where rhododendron by species mm-hmm. likes a moist, well drained soil, and that does have that. It's almost like a surface root. They don't right. grow real deep. No. So, but, you know, some of you may have noticed when you've got forty uh, year old azaleas, and you <laughs> go to take them out, and they well, that was easy. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's not like they're all the way down to China. <laughs> that's right. <Yeah. laughs> But uh, you just got to keep that in mind. Um, I still would encourage people to plant uh, annuals and annuals, and, yeah, and sure. other plants with uh, it. But yep. bulbs, I understand, yeah. where they disappear and they pop up wow. and they're going to raise the so- the root mass. Mm-hmm. So yeah. moist, well-drained. well-drained yeah. You want to also make Acidic. sure that you're doing a good, healthy um, layer of mulch on top because yeah. that will make them, uh, that'll keep them nice and yeah. And I've got to add my my thing. I've got the thing about lace bug and azaleas. It's an insect that you that's hard to see, but it makes the leaves like almost tiny spots on the leaves. Yeah. Just treat it with imidacloprid. Mm-hmm. Do it two times a year. The I tell you what, VBG Fertilome has a azalea fertilizer with a insecticide, and to me, it's the perfect thing when you're feeding. Azaleas, rhododendrons, PJMs, even if you're feeding like euonymus, euonymus. it'll take care of euonymus yeah. scale. Right. It'll take care of lace bug because right. often lace bug, you can't really see what's going on. It looks like that the plant's hungry mm-hmm. and it really has an insect on it. So that's, again, now I've, I've been told, right, uh-huh. get your pens out yeah. and a piece yeah. of paper because it's fertilome, azalea, systemic, fertilizer there you go there you go <laughs> nice and slow got that fence <laughs> yeah. hope you're listening <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all, right. all right we've got to take a bake <laughs> we'll be right back in the garden right after this Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685- 1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. 
and we'll see you in the garden. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with their number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Holly Tone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. We are back at Bloomers in the Garden. With a name like Pansy, <laughs> you got to be really tough. That's right. <laughs> There's a boy named Sue. Can we put that on, <laughs> Brett? Yeah, well, me you know, too. We need to get that in back. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, um, everybody should be out there and, and looking at these beautiful pansies, all the beautiful colors are now, and oh, they're, they're unbelievable. Huh? Like, they are. And uh, that anybody who has like container gardens and stuff that are looking oh, tired. My goodness. These will, you can plant them in container gardens. Containers, yeah. The biggest thing is that they will flower all the way until you get to the real cold, icy wind. And what happens, the plant stays, but the flowers fall off. Mm-hmm. Now, sometimes the, the plant may wither a bit, but then they'll come back in March. Yeah. And that, to me, I think the best thing is... Plant your bulbs, plant your tulips, and then put pansies over top. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Pink, pink pansies yeah. or pink uh, tulip bulbs, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. With pansies, like a blue, blue powdery oh, blue, yeah. powdery blue over yeah. top. Nice, yeah, that's huh? beautiful. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. don't see too much powdery. That blue, powdery blue. No, oh. no, that was that used to be the colors. Like we have every color but blue. But blue, yeah. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. Like think about it. roses. Are there any blue roses? No. No, Ramsey, maybe. no, and that's why hydrangeas are so popular. Right, right. Anyway, we talked about containers, mm-hmm. and that they'll they will hang over a little bit of the pot as yeah, well in a container. Yeah, and we have probably November through most of November mm-hmm. where they'll be okay. Right, it all depends on on when we get that you know. Arctic Frost. blast, you know, that comes <laughs> yeah. in that yeah. they Boom. always, t- you know, all of a sudden everybody forgets to dr- how to drive. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, and that's where it, that they'll kind of, you know, just kind of go stick. They, it's like they're almost a respiration sh- slows down. That sounds like weird, but mm-hmm. it's just the plants are there and they'll, Hey, it's like overwintering weeds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they are. You know, yeah. like where there's yeah. the evergreen wintering weeds, and uh-huh. that's kind of how they 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 do that. Mm-hmm. That they may look a little haggard over the winter, but in March, when we have the increased sunlight, and that calls the pansies back into bloom, go. better than ever. They're going to be better, better in March than they were in the fall. Oh, and the look autumn. at that! Oh, so. 
planting pansies are, are a great thing, and great. everybody should put them in, mm-hmm. especially for people like me that are just so tired of moms. <laughs> yes, oh, I my know. gosh. I'm oh, just my so tired of moms. Yeah. <laughs> you know, mom, you guys, you know, think of a nice uh-huh. yellow mom, but right. planting, again, blue blotch blue pansies blotch. over top oh, of it. Yeah, that's the hit right there. Yeah. I think yeah. so. Yep. If you don't, if you're wondering, I like blue. So, yeah. blue, on blue. With pansies, Julio, mm-hmm. what's the difference between pansies and violas and Johnny jump ups? Here and you Johnny go. jump up. Yeah, the violas are, are tinier. They're a smaller uh, looking flower. Yeah, like some people mistakenly call them violets. Violets. Yeah, yeah but they, they are. are. Yeah. Johnny jump ups are a type of viola, yeah. and that uh, it's a, it's an old name. And that we used to grow field-grown pansies where you would have to dig them up and they would be put in a, they called it a till, that was the name of the pot, that you'd dig them out, you'd put them in bare root into these till containers, and then you'd transplant them. So it was like you had to dig them out like they're a and b nursery stock. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. But it just, again, pansies... Tough. I Tough. mean, how pansies ever got like the the name for somebody that like was not, you know, aggressive right. and strong? I don't know. I don't but know. pansies are definitely a a, tough, a tough. great plant, and that can withstand a lot, a yeah. lot of abuse, mm-hmm. and that they can grow in some of the harshest areas. Really. And we're not we don't have to worry about it. like our whole listening area. You can plant winter pansies and and. Is there a difference between spring pansies and winter pansies? Not really. Not really. Not really. I mean, there are varieties mm-hmm. where they they will market them for the fall season and call them something Arctic Blast pansy Arctic Blast. something. <laughs> but the reality yeah. is, is that they do well in the cold weather. It's the heat they don't like. I don't like it, yeah. That by August or really by sometime in July when it gets real hot, mm-hmm. they're done. Yeah. They're done. You're not going to get your pansies to come back mm-hmm. that you plant now and all of a sudden, oh, oh, here they're coming back. It's September again. No, yeah. they're not. Your, your luck. Good luck with that. Yeah, no, no way. Maybe if they're in a little bit of shade. Mm-hmm. Mm, eh, maybe. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Not likely. Yeah. Not likely. Okay. So I don't know. Are you planting pansies? I have I have before. You know, yeah. I, I haven't done any yet. I have the window boxes that I have on my deck. I'm uh-huh. going to replace and put pansies, pansies in. It, yeah. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually plant some daffodils, some of the dwarf daffodils. Oh, are you? In those containers. So and then that. put the pansies on top. Right. And then that way I'll be set for fall and then also for spring. spring. Yeah. When they're done, mm-hmm. I'll transplant the daffodils someplace else. And then plant them, you know, replace the soil. And then I'll go and plant my spring, summer annuals. Beautiful. Uh, Continuous uh, planting there. That's it. That's it. And and honestly, window boxes are so easy. Yeah, they are. Because they're confined space, you know, a 24-inch by like 8-inch. You know, Uh that's real easy. It's easy, You're planting your entire yard. Now (laughs) that's a little harder. Yeah, I know. But uh, you can do that. Yeah, with a guy like you who's always busy, you know, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. You know, it's great. You could do it really quick, and it yep. puts on a real show because oh, yeah. the flower. You know, we were talking about how big the flowers Flower, are yeah. and how good it looks. Beautiful, because those flowers are so big. Yeah. And it's also they've done a lot of breeding that way. Yep. So awesome. Anything to add? No. Well, I tell you what, go out there and get get the, your pansies now because they're really looking great. And and good point because what happens they sell out. That's right. No grower wants to be stuck with pansies. No. So they want to sell out. So what happens, they're always in short supply. So go out to your garden center this weekend and get your pansies now. Even if you're not going to plant them, you can still water them. Just keep them on the, the patio. Just keep them watered. And then when you're ready to plant them, you can. But what's going to happen if you wait you know, much longer, all of a sudden the supply is gone. Gone, yeah. So, yeah your good favorite advice. color will be gone. Yep. yep. All right. We'll be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. 
Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Barlow's Seagirt, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Monton, Pennsylvania. Ashcombs Farm and Greenhouse, Mechanicsburg, PA. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Today, during our segment, What's Bugging You? We're going to talk about those spider webs. Well, they're, let's call them just webs that you see in the landscaping garden. Mm-hmm. Um, is it a friend? Is it a foe? Oh. Ah, there they are. Get off me. Get them off me. Ah. Um, look, spider webs are not necessarily a bad thing. Now, Julio, you and I were talking about spiders. You wanted to bring in, we talked about it like last week. Yeah, we did. We, you were going to bring in house plants. You saw a spider, spider. nest on the them. webs on all, all over it. Yeah. Now, you don't want to necessarily bring them in the house, yeah. but on your landscape plants, hey, they're helping you out by getting rid of some of those insects that are feeding on your plants. That's right. It also could be a sign that you have an insect problem that they're feeding off of. <laughs> I mean, you got yeah. now, now, how did this all start? You got a picture, right? Yeah. Pat sent us a picture of her and uh, she had it in, in the, uh, her hand was down in the ground. It looks like in the grass. <laughs> no, no, no. It was in front of uh, oh, Ilex. Was, oh, yeah. That's right. It was in front of an Ilex. Yeah. 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 And that when you looked at it, it was looked like a string, but there were right. insects. On that. You know, yeah. have you ever seen the movie The Fly? Help yes, me. I have. Help me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what it I showed have. was that the it was a spider for sure, mm-hmm. and that it had caught something in its web, yeah. bundled it up like a little package, you know, put it in its <laughs> own bag. homemade, little self-made bag. Ziploc storage bag <laughs> right, yeah. kept it on the web for consumption later on <laughs> that's a spider yeah. you know i gotta admit as a kid i would take a fly and uh-huh. throw it into a oh, spider really? that and watch the i i i did this okay all right uh, i'm weird okay yeah we know Leave that. me alone we know you are <laughs> so you would see a spider's web right? right and the spider would be in the center of it mm-hmm. and you would put you know an insect you throw it in it would go and it would do its thing <laughs> but then if you throw like a leaf in it it would go after the leaf we get stuck in it and the spider would come out and it would clean the web uh-huh. and and it would drop out and i always uh-huh. was amazed how it could it possibly do that right amazing isn't it i don't know i t- it nature it's, it's is, is amazing yeah. it's it, than is, us. it is amazing <laughs> it is 
to me, it is uh, it has something more to do with a, a religious experience. Okay, we won't go any farther than that. Mm-hmm. But the issue is is that it's amazing to watch how they interact with your plants. It is beautiful. Now, how about on the other side when we talk about foes? Ooh. When we talk about spider mites, Ooh. spider yeah. mites are like pockets of webs that are all in your plant, mostly a bird of spruce or spruces themselves, but they also will get into roses and other things. They don't look like a traditional spider web itself. How would you explain it, Julio? That it's almost like it, it covers a large section of the plant, but it's it's not that traditional like like dream catcher look. No, no, it isn't. The, of the typical spider web, it's more it's smaller, like smaller, maybe the yes. half yes. the size of your palm or yeah. something like that. Yeah, it's not that large. Cuz sp- spider mites are tiny. Mm-hmm. tiny and the tiny. way that you can tell is you get a white piece of paper, mm-hmm. bring it over to the plant, and what you're going to do, you're going to tap, tap the foliage towards the paper and you're going to look to see if you find little specks scurrying around. Mm-hmm. And that if you see them and you have those webs, you have spider mites. Mm-hmm. That is a problem. You need to spray a systemic insecticide to make your plant poisonous to the insect. Then that way you'll control the mites because the mites will kill your plant. Yeah. It will kill your plant. And, and they are not a friendly, they are definitely a foe. Yeah. S- good. Spruces. I mean, almost all plants will get m- mites on them. But spider mites are the biggest problem, red spider mite. So regular spiders, a good Good thing. thing. Leave them alone. Because they're eating the insects that are on your plant. Mm -hmm. Spider mites, on the other hand, are a bad thing because they're eating your plant. Right? Got anything to add? No. No. All right. Beautiful. We've got another break. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomers Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Cole, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomers Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomers in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomers Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860, WWDB, and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800, 
WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. See me and Julio down by the schoolyard. Well, Julio, here we are, back in the schoolyard. Yes, Yes, we are. Mitch, we got schooled by Mitch today. I I know, we did. How about that? Mr. Forager. The Forager. (laughs) The city boy. out. That's right. (laughs) <laughs> you live in Philadelphia, and you're going to the park to go find food. That I think that's great. Yeah. Hey, you're going to have to bring some of that in for us so we can look yeah, at it. Yeah, you can give it to Julio. I'll watch him eat it. <laughs> yeah. I, don't. Uh, I don't know about that. Yeah, no, no thank you. Okay. Uh, but, hey, go right ahead. I will. <laughs> hey, you know what? Next week, we've got a special guest oh, yes, coming we in. Do, huh? uh, William is our Dutch bulb supplier. So we're going to talk all about tulips and daffodils and crocus and all of those uh, spring flowering bulbs. Mm -hmm. Can't wait for Uh, that. Yeah, we're also going to talk about you know what do you do with your dahlias and your summer flowering bulbs? How right. do you how do you store them mm-hmm. over the winter? So we're going to be right. talking about all oh, that. That's stuff. exciting, huh? All that stuff. Yep. And yep. don't forget the next time you visit your favorite garden center or greenhouse or nursery, tell them you listen. Bloomers in the garden. Yeah. Tell your friends. Yeah. Tell everybody. <laughs> oh, and look, call us yeah, if call you've got us. questions. Call the Bloomers in the Garden hotline six zero nine six eight five. One eight eight zero. You're going to leave a message. We're going to answer it right away. But you've got to give us a call, uh, and that we can get back to you. It did house plants, landscape plants, right. vegetable plants. Right. It doesn't really matter, or landscape design for that. Yeah, and we thank you for all those beautiful uh, pictures that you sent too. We we, we yeah, greatly you can appreciate text us that. as well. Mm-hmm. Text yep. us. I like when people call. Oh we, yeah, I like that we can, too. We can hear I their can voice talk. and get them on the air. That's right. Free T-shirt for you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all right. Look, we'll see you next week. Thank you, Brett. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Brett. Great job today. We'll see you in the garden. See you in the garden. <laughs>